congratulations are definitely in order. Obviously, uh, Bluey has been a huge success, but the music separate from that has been a big success. Um, with children's programming, instrumentals don't normally take off like this. Uh, what's it been like to have your work embraced and such a wide audience want to experience the Bluey music outside of the show? You're absolutely right. I, um, I think that's been the big surprise is that it is an inst there is a song at the end, but it's basically an instrumental album. And, um, you know, there's absolutely, <laughs> it's been, it's been, everything's been a surprise. I'm surprised that I'm talking to you from Australia right now. It's really exciting. But um, uh, yeah, the response has been amazing. I, there's definitely, I guess, you know, when, when I went, started on this journey with Bluey, you know, you kind of, uh, I think a lot of composers are the same, we leave our egos at the door and just try and focus on ways to sort of elevate the show. And the show was already great. So um, finding those, that, that was the focus. And then when we got the opportunity to do the album, you know, went back through and, and found uh, the, all these tracks that, are, that went for about 30 seconds long and wanted to extend them. And um, even, even during the process of doing the album, we never thought, oh, this, this is going to be popular or a hit. <laughs> we were going, oh, it's an instrumental music album. I hope people like it. But it, the response has been fantastic. Yeah. Well, and, and speaking of that, um, so you had to take your music that you had composed for the show and expand mm. those into tracks for the album. It's not just a straight soundtrack. Um, yeah. So what was that process like? How did you select which tracks were going to be done? Um, yep. I'm curious to know what, like, the inside the studio of, of how that went down. <laughs> um, well, I know there were, there is there is the, well the first half of the album um, is focused on the games, and um, I know from friends who have kids, we knew what the their favorite games were, and so we took those those pieces like Grannies and Keepy Uppy, and then I got to do extend them and, and bring in horn sections and string sections. I went a bit overboard with it. I totally blew the budget. I just went crazy with it. And um, um, I just, you know, got obsessed with that. Um, and then then we found there were all these other episodes people loved, like camping and, and things like that. And they were sort of stories. And so we put that, uh, the journey sort of starts of all the games. And some of the tracks may be a little bit too long, but I wanted them to be able to, like kids to be able to play them and play the games from the show and have their own imagination around it. Maybe that's why it's been doing well is that kids can actually play the games while playing the, the soundtrack. And if maybe if there were songs, it might, they wouldn't have their own imagination around that. I don't, I don't know, it's, <laughs> it's uh, try to work out what it was. Um, but the, uh, uh, yeah, so th there's that. And then the, yeah, the story side of it, uh, similar, we just sort of, taking these tracks that we had written for the show and, and I was able to do everything I really wanted to do, but I didn't have the, the resources or the, or the time to do it then. So yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure. It's all, it's so funny looking back on these things and going, oh, how did we make that album? How did that even happen? Cause it's such a blur of just oh, getting excited by ideas and let's do this, oh, let's do this and, and, and seeing where it goes. The music to Bluey, you, you can hear just a few notes and instantly recognize that as Bluey. It has such a specific sound. I was curious to know, how did you find that, that Bluey musical sound? Like you can, you can pick any track and just instantly know if you, if you know the show, that's a Bluey song. Oh, that's so nice of you to say. And um, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's, one of the first shows where I've, I've well, there's a few shows have been similar, but one of the first shows where I've really going, this is kind of my sound. I get to use all my sort of broken instruments and things like that. And um, and and uh, I, I think, you know, no matter what you, what I write, I'll end up sounding like me. But we, I, I, I think for the show, I used a lot of, you know, I, never, I used a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, live players as well, like musicians, and they are, um, their talent really adds to it. And they're all such unique players as well. So when they come in and play, they add to that sound and it just sort of comes gel together and ended up that way. But uh, I, I, it's really hard to put my finger on what it is specifically. I think there's, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think there's this aspect of 
I, I will use like a twenty dollar second thrift shop guitar rather than a really nice fancy one, and and try to make that sound good and find things with character um, that that I like and and try and incorporate that into the score. Uh, but it it also doesn't really have that big um, upfront overwhelming sound that a lot of kids shows have, and that's just because of what what what's on hand for me and and what I what I was liking when I was writing it. I was curious to know your your background with music. Like, when did your love of music start? What were the sources of inspiration for you that made you want to even become a, a composer? Well, I was you know I was never like a prodigy kid. I wasn't one of those so I, but I loved it like loved it so much and when I was about 12 I had a, a, a teacher called Ken McLean piano teacher and he um, was also a tv composer and he gave me the writing bug and he also introduced me to like Duke Ellington and all these like and and artists that I absolutely loved and and still do and uh and then I started playing um I remember when I was 14, I just, I got obsessed and practiced all the time just for the joy of it. And um, when I was 14, I got the, uh, a gig playing in a restaurant and, um, and that was, it was like, I thought I was the coolest person in the world because <laughs> I was making 20 bucks playing in a restaurant and, um, and, and, and I just got obsessed from there really. And, and uh, I, I guess I always, loved tv and i loved um film and and it was something i wanted to do you know by by the time i finished high school um i actually started wanting to be a concert pianist but i just i wasn't good i just don't have that talent like i just i was there i was definitely the worst in the at, at when i was studying at, at university i was the, definitely the worst in the right and my um piano mentor said you're just writing all the time you need to stop and 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 change what you're doing and um and then at that time I met a lot of the people um even Daly Pearson we met when I was we were both 18 um and and he's the executive producer of Bluey and uh we, we've been making things ever since so um that's been the sort of journey and uh you know I guess every just landed on things I was obsessed with, really. Now, there's been so much interest in Bluey, which was released as a digital soundtrack, Bluey the album, yeah. that now it's coming out on CD and vinyl, at least here in the States. Um, we, we never had it on, on physical media. So many people wanted to, to own it, to be able to touch it and open it up. Um, yeah. what, is it, what does it feel like to have people want to have your music like as something that they can hold on to? And are you a, are you a vinyl guy? Do you collect I, vinyl? I, I do. I love vinyl. I love the ceremony of putting it on I love playing I love I love that you can't skip tracks sometimes um that's just I, I, I think that's great and and you can sort of hear the album how a lot of them are supposed to be heard uh I mean obviously not everyone has access to vinyl and but we, we did design this album to be played as an album it does sort of have a through line and we were really pedantic about oh does that key lead on to this key and all this sort of stuff just lots of technical little things um, we also recorded a lot in the studio next door on old sort of 70s gear and things like that so vinyl feels like home um, and I also think there's a real nostalgia about it with this is a lot of kids first albums and uh, first album and so when they've got it uh, they could it's almost like a souvenir they can go this is the first album I got not the first album I streamed which doesn't sound as cool but maybe <laughs> maybe in the future it will be yeah well and it comes with some some physical goodies I think the CD has some stickers and the the yeah, vinyl yeah. has a poster with it um, and that, yeah. that that blue vinyl is uh is really attractive it had to be blue didn't it yeah <laughs> <laughs> now had to be. I, I, the obvious last question is, are there any plans for a follow-up album? Obviously, there's been more seasons of Bluey since the album yeah. came out. You've written more music for it. Um, just seems like a natural fit. And maybe you can't share the news, but I was curious <laughs> if, if, if we're getting a, a follow-up album. Um, I'm pretty adamant that we'll, we'll get it happening. We're sort of, we're, we're, we're planning, we're, we're, we're working on, on a plan to to do something if I do it I really don't want to do a cookie cutter just drag things from the show I really want to make something special um which takes a lot of time and that's 
uh, and that's just important to me. I'm sure people will still like it anyway, but I, I really want to uh, make something that's, you know, keeps 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 the vibe of the first album and um but I, i'm also right in the middle of season three so uh it's really hard to find the time to uh, writing new pieces and then revisiting the old ones but i'd love to i'd absolutely love to um and i'm always open for like any anybody has any ideas about what their favorite pieces that what must haves do we have to have on the album um, yeah, they can hit me up. I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations again on the, the success of Bluey the album and the, the vinyl and, and CD release and uh, look forward to seeing some future Bluey adventures accompanied by your music. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Great to meet you too. And yeah, thanks for the chat. <laughs>